Originally, I was, I was a serving officer in the British Army. I was very fortunate to be involved in Special Forces Aviation. Uh, I was the chief engineer for Special Forces Helicopters in the British Army. Unfortunately, I, my injuries, uh, which resulted from having a great deal of fun doing that, led me to actually to have to take a policy job and uh, became Airworthiness One, which is sort of the head of Airworthiness for the Defence Logistics Organisation. And I, I was responsible for looking at all the airworthiness policies and I was also involved in standards and uh, I was also involved in a project called the JAP project which was bringing all the maintenance policies together. And uh, I was lucky enough to do all the maintenance policies for the drones. I also looked at the airworthiness policies for drones and I was responsible for uh, making the Royal Artillery take, take the Phoenix system more seriously and you can't repair it with duct tape and a screwdriver and a spanner. You have to actually be airworthiness trained. I had a lot of experience there. I then left the army because my injuries were, were sort of escalated to the point where I couldn't really operate and I started a software company which was called at the time Risk Management Information Systems Limited, RMIS, uh, with a colleague of mine and uh, we, we developed a risk management system. I kind of left the aviation world totally behind. Some years later I was approached by a young lady called Tina Brevitt who was a very passionate uh, lady who had started a small network in the UK called SUAS which then stood for the Society for Unmanned Air Systems. And her problem was she was a woman in a predominantly man's world. Unfortunately, when the drone industry started, it was very male dominated. She was getting a bit of a hard time from some of her competitors. And she had absolutely no money, no technology skills, and she needed some help. So I invested in the company. Uh, we created the technology around it. We invested in some marketing. And I sort of let her run it for a few years. Uh, and it developed, I think when, I st when she started, it was 124 members, I think we ended up with 40,000. She introduced me to the BSI, British Standards Institute, which at the time we were looking at getting them to write a, a sort of, uh, either a standard or a, a kite mark for British unmanned systems UAV operators. And they said, this is great, you know, we really do think it's a good idea, but there's this huge project going off at the International Standards Organization. We can't man it, we haven't got the expertise, we don't have anyone to go. And we're looking at your CV, Mr. Garbett, and we're wondering if you represent the UK. So I was like, oh, I'm very flattered, thank you very much. So off I went and uh, joined uh, ISO TC20 SC16, which is the, the committee that's responsible for writing the International Standards for Unmanned Air Systems. Uh, luckily became the convener of Working Group 3, which is responsible for writing the international standards for drone operations. And I sit on all the other ISO committees at that level as well, so the manufacturing and now the UTM committees. And it really sort of snowballed from there. My realisation of what the drone industry was about and where it was going and understanding, I think, that this sort of thing of the little four rotor air drone or UAV was really only the very start and that the industry was very fragmented, the stakeholders in it really weren't very connected together, communications were very poor, and so my now business partner and I came up with the idea of putting together an organisation that would connect all the stakeholders. Ergo, Born was Drone Major Group. 